Hello there. It's Umo Akin Shalue here. I'm one of the counselors in Bridge Clinic. And it's my pleasure to let you know that Bridge Clinic is celebrating its 25th year anniversary. It's been 25 years of conceiving joy. As part of our celebrations, we would like to tell our stories. So we'll use this opportunity to speak with some of the clients who have had treatment with us. They have a lot to tell us. In the last 25 years, there's been a whole lot. We've had over 3,000 babies to our credit. So we'll only be speaking with a handful of them to tell us their experience. And today, we'd like to start with the very first, numero uno. It is my pleasure to have with me today, Mrs. Iforma Emekwe. You are welcome, ma'am. Thank you very much. You are welcome. All right. So I've already uh, given a little hint by saying that you are the very first. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, it's uh, given out a lot already. However, I would like for you to tell us, for how long had you been married? and probably trying uh, to have children. For how long did you have that delay? Thank you very much. Um, I had the delay for six years. For six years. Um, prior to, to that, I got pregnant mm -hmm. and had an ectopic pregnancy and had it removed. Then the problem started, the waiting started until after six years. So six years is from the ectopic pregnancy? Yes, please. Okay. So you had the ectopic pregnancy whilst you, the period that you were waiting. Can you tell us a little bit about what was going on? What was going on? First of all, let's say, was there anything going on within your family circles, in your personal lives? Let's start from there. Thank you. My family circle, nothing really. They were very supportive. My husband, nothing. He was very supportive. The, what was going on was me going on, really. It was not easy. So at that time, I used to work in Balogu, you know, upstairs. So every woman that passed was pregnant in my eyes. I'm telling you the truth. It was crazy. Every woman I saw was pregnant. I stopped attending birthdays. I stopped going, accepting to become God, godmother to girls I knew when they got married. I attended their weddings. Come and be my godmother. Come and attend my, you know, I was jealous. I'm not even, I don't, I, don't, I don't regret saying it. I was jealous, but maybe from a good place, but every other person was pregnant except me, right? So I would cry on end. My husband would always encourage me that, see, it's not the end of life, you're still young. I said, young, at what age? I was 20 something. So at what age would I be? you know, become menopausal. You don't know that, you know. Sometimes you have early menopause. Right. So it was very, very difficult for me, but because of the kind of man I married, I married to, it was, at some point I threatened to leave him. I threatened to leave him, so he reported me to his parents. His parents were alive then. I said, look, I don't want to be a stumbling block to anybody. Oh, Just marry, have kids, go ahead with your life, let me go and face whatever. You know, he said, no, people must not have children. The re uh, children are not the only reason to marry. I said, well, to start with you, a Nigerian, you're an Igbo man, and you tell me everybody must not have kids. I don't believe you. So maybe when I'm 50 and I can't have kids, even if you're 100, you can still have kids, go and marry and have your own kids. Or one day you bring somebody, say, oh, it was just a one night stand, and you jump out with one son. 
say, what am I going to do then? I would have wasted my youth and could have done something better for my life. Just go and marry. Let's go our separate ways. The father called me on the landline then. What nonsense am I hearing? Must you have kids? Just enjoy your life. Children will come when children will come. But people think, when I say people don't believe it, that coming from an elderly person, an Igbo man, yes. was that real? I said, yes, it was. And I told them, look, I don't, if you say I should stay, right? I don't want to hear any snide comments. I don't want to hear any advice. Like somebody advised me in the office then that Sarah went there for 70, was 75 when she, like, are you, are you okay? If you don't know what to say, don't just say anything. So I should wait until I'm 75 before I, I start looking around for, for, for babies, you know. So true to his words, he spoke to his people. Even before then, nobody was giving me any issues. Like I said, the issue was mine and mine alone. So they were all so supportive and to the end, but they weren't alive to see their grandkids, you know. So that was just one regret I had. I, I honestly wish they were, I mean, because such supportive family members deserve the joy of yeah. being this long awaited. They really deserve the joy. So they had passed on even before you got pregnant? Yes, they had. Oh, uh, that's a shame. Mm -hmm. However, I think if they can see us, if there's any chance they can see us, then they already know that what they had waited for did come to pass. Yeah, I did. So a lot wasn't happening to you in terms of um, external pressure. So all the pressure that you probably felt at that time was just internal. From yes, you. it was, yes, from, from me. your own, um, perhaps you've planned your life, at this age I want to do this, at that age I want to achieve this. Doesn't everybody. Everybody does. Mm -hmm. but, but some are not that... Um, they are not that fixated on doing it. Some are, and then some just give up. But since you were really um, pressured within yourself to achieve this, what then, what steps did you take towards achieving this pregnancy? Hmm. The question should have been, what steps did I not take? Did I, not take? Okay. I really, really went over and above. Yeah? Babalao. Doctors, churches, any hospital. Just tell me, uh, just try this person, I'll go. My, so one time I went to the village and I got this abu. Concussion. Yeah, concussion, thank you. I didn't tell my husband I was going to that place. I told him I was going to see my people in the village. You know, my, the, his parents were alive, mine were alive. I said I was going to see my father. I just went to the village, went to, to the native doctor. He gave me that and I hid it under the bed. So one day, I didn't know he was around, I was drinking, he saw it and said, so with all your education, mm -hmm. hmm? You think that this thing, because he's a medical lab scientist, you think that this thing you are drinking will make you pregnant. That he doesn't understand. What are you even thinking? How can this thing in the bottle make you get pregnant? I said maybe because it's going to wash the tools or do whatever inside. I don't know, but this is what they told me to do. So if anything they ask you to do, you do. I said yes, so long as it will help me get pregnant. So apart from that, some other nasty advice, you know, you have to have sex 10 days at a stretch before you can get, that's what I did and it worked for me. And I told him, he said, use your senses, how many days does ovulation last? Can you get me? You have just tried for the fun of it. That was it. It wasn't fun because it was torturous. Yes. I insisted, the first day I started crying, he said, crying I said I was tired you know to me because it's a kind of trade for some people so to me it was easy he told me it wasn't easy because he knows about these things you know you're not doing it for fun you're doing it because you have something in behind your heart uh, in the back at the back of your mind you want to achieve something so you're anxious you know and well it wasn't easy at all I, I, I really, really went over and above. Over and above. 
and this is sort of typical with uh, couples who are trying to um, achieve a pregnancy mm -hmm. most would do whatever it is that they can do whatever it is they know to do or whatever they are told to do yeah so, but uh, for women mostly yes for men i doubt it my husband believed that god will give us children whenever he wanted he he believed in in science or still believes in science but i believe that you can do you can go out there you can go out there and try your luck but he said it, it doesn't work that way. So I think these things happen mostly to women. Men take more, you know, they control themselves more. They are not that emotional. Even if they are, they don't show it. Okay. I was the one crying. He never cried or I never caught him, right. yes. you know. Okay, so uh, uh, you um, eventually got to know about IVF. Mm -hmm. How did that happen? Okay, before I knew about Bridge, I had heard about because I used to read, you know, a lot, a lot trying to ask questions a lot, you know. So some I knew about IVF, and somebody told me they could do it in the UK. We went for a visa, and they said I was too young. I was I lied about my age. Okay. I said, guy, I didn't lie. This is my age. They said. The man, the white man actually said, you can get this from Oluwole. Like, what, Oluwole? How do you know? Anyway, that's by the way, but this is my real age. He said I forged it. So I didn't get that. Visa. But a year after, I heard about the bridge clinic from a friend whose auntie was working there. They just started and I heard about the bridge clinic. So the, the lady, my friend said, if he, you didn't get a visa to go and do IVF abroad, but the IVF is here in Nigeria. Yeah. That there's this new clinic, it's called the Bridge Clinic. My auntie works there, she just got a job there, and she told me about it. That's why I'm telling you. I said, you must be joking. She said, no, it's true. I said, please, where is the place? Then they were at the um, Tamil Savage VI. She gave me the address. I rushed there that same day. And I met the woman, you know, there were just a few people. I met the woman, I said, um, so, 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 person's friend, your niece. She said, oh, she told me about you. Are you the person? I said, yes. I said, please, can I see the doctor? She said, sure, why not? That was it. I met my very good friend. <laughs> no, but in fact, friend for life, Dr. Richardson Ajay. We have been, have been friends since then till now. I met him in 1999, 1998 actually. And he said they were still setting up, nothing was on ground. That just leave your number when we're ready, we'll send for you. I said, what are you talking about? I heard people are working. He said, we are just starting, just don't worry. When we set up, you'll be the first to know. I dropped my office landline, dropped my house landline. No, there was no cell phone then. So I went home. I didn't tell my husband anyway. So that's another story on its own. Wow. So by the time um, they set up, they called for you, I guess? Yes, they did. That was 1999. 1999, because yes. that is um, the 25 years we're talking about now. So even before Bridge Clinic truly came into existence, you knew. I knew. You knew. I knew so about you cheated. it. <laughs> yes, I did. I did. I did because I was desperate. Desperate. I needed to have kids. I wanted to, you know. Yeah, some people marry and they don't want kids. That's a different ball game. Or they say, oh, we we'll stay for 10 years without kids. That's a different ball game. But mine, I wanted to, but I couldn't, couldn't. at that time. Hence my locating the British Clinic and meeting Dr. Ajay the second time. So when I went to, the, to meet him the second time, he told me everything I needed to know. I said, what, what about your husband? I said, well, I haven't told him. He said, OK. Why didn't you tell him? I said, I want to gather more information. Would I just go to him and tell him, oh, 
I heard that he's he's not going to listen to me until I have hard facts, you know, hard facts before I can go to uh, and drop on the table. Then we'll have a conversation. I said, okay, tell him and ask him to come and see me. So I got home. I was so excited. I told him, oh, there's this clinic. I went there last year and I, I, I went there again today. They told me to go back. When they you know, start, they'll call me. They, they called me and I went to see the, the doctor. He was so nice. He said, I should come and tell you. They are doing this, they are doing that. He was just listening to me. When I finished, I said, are you not going to say anything? He said, OK. You went to a hospital of that magnitude without telling me. So it is now that they ask you to come and call me, that you're calling me, okay, go and tell your doctor, get a rope, tie around my neck and drag me to the clinic. You know, you know that um, emotional blackmail works yes. all the time. So you, you pulled out all Yes, I cried and that was the magic. So he went, okay, 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 I'll go out. <laughs> If I say that it's me, that I don't want you to have kids. If I accuse me all the time, you're not crying, you're not doing this, you're not going to DB, you're not going to Babalao, you know. So we went and saw Dr. Jai, and that was how this history was made. So I take it, you, you know, being that it was your first time, I'm just going to jump to you getting pregnant. Mm -hmm. By the time you were pregnant, you know, at this time, you've now had the experience you always wanted, even though you had been pregnant before, so mm -hmm. you weren't entirely new. Mm -hmm. And to an extent, the desperation must have reduced significantly. No way. No, that was when it tripled. It heightened. it heightened. So what I want to ask is this. Now that sort of things have worked, did you, did you start to have questions? Because mostly I observe that when women are trying to achieve pregnancy, especially, they may not really listen to voice of reason. They may not think about anything. And then when they become pregnant, you know, then they can calmly think. Then they can, uh, you know, like, reason better. Let me, let me tell you, you what. Know, let, me, you know, let me cut it short yeah. there. So this pregnancy was a peculiar one, right? So I got pregnant, we were all excited after the test. Go home, don't tell anybody that you're pregnant. That was Dr. Jai advising me. Come back after two weeks, we'll run another test. I said, okay. I got home, collected the land phone, called my mother, Mama, Adi Mimi, that is I'm pregnant. I called everybody. So my husband used to run a lab then. So after two weeks, he said, let's go and uh, run the test there. We went and ran the test. He said, OK, he's still there. We went back. Dr. Jai ran another test. You're pregnant, but don't tell anybody. I said, OK. I, I went back. I called them. He's still there. Oh. The doctor said, I shouldn't tell anybody. Three, another two weeks, come back for blood tests. He wanted to be sure. We went back. We did the blood test, and he said, okay. In fact, something happened. The first time mm -hmm. we went there, because after the trial,